our quiet death. Begin log. Sidney Denio sits on a sizably large boulder. He stares into the distance ahead of him. His gaze is intently fixated on the planet in front of him. Several minutes pass. Denio remains unmoving. It's beautiful. Lindy Brams slowly approaches Denio from behind and proceeds to stand behind him. Yeah, never been one to admire the view. <laughs> Mind if I sit? I won't stop you. Dinio shifts left as Bram settles himself on the right. Much like Dinio, his gaze is fixed upon Earth. You ever wonder what it'd be like if you never joined the Foundation? Dinio tilts his head towards Bram's, just enough to see his face. I do sometimes. When it's late and I can't sleep, I'll stare at the ceiling and just... I don't know, fantasize? About... What might have been? Dinio turns fully to look at Bram's, who still wears a smile on his face. You have regrets? Bram's shrugs. They're just fantasies. That's hardly an answer. Bram's turns to meet Dinio's gaze. Does it really matter? Well, I think it does. <laughs> Fine, I'll humor you. Yes, I... I have regrets. He turns his gaze back to the distant Earth. A lot of them. Wished I rode home more. Wish I didn't spend so much time studying. I wish... Said goodbye. And often I just wish I never joined the Foundation. Never learned about any of this. And was simply just... Blissfully ignorant. Until my end. Dinio turns to face the planet once more. Bram starts hugging his knees and his smile is now noticeably absent. They sit in silence for several minutes. I have no regrets. Bullshit, you don't. Half the words that come out of your mouth are either curses or complaints. Dinio smirks and shrugs. <laughs> and this? Do you regret... this? I did. Once upon a time. I used to think you were such an ass. All business, no play, that sort of thing, you know? And God, it irked me. Some days I'd come out here just to scream about how pissed off I was, calling you all these horrible names, wishing they'd just play someone, anyone else here with me. Dinio looks down, a wide grin still on his face. I remember the day it got so bad that I just... I just started walking. There's no way to go, of course, but anywhere away from you was better. I walked until my legs burned, and then I just sat down. I calmed down. Bram sniffles. Dinio's grin fades into a slight frown. It seems so stupid now. I can't even remember what made me do that. I called you useless. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. You had a habit of doing that. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine, don't be. You shaped up all right in the end. They share a laugh and smile. Brams shifts himself closer to Dinio. They hold hands, and Brams leans in, laying his head on Dinio's shoulder. Hesitantly, Dinio does the same, laying his head against Brams' own. Dinio's digital display pad beeps. He looks over at it. The time reads 180754. <sighs> Five seconds. Oh. Five seconds pass. A bright light suddenly pulses in the center of the North American continent, enveloping multiple countries in a blue white glow. 
from the epicenter, several fissures nearly a hundred miles wide rip through the Earth's crust, and large gouts of blazing red burst outwards, pouring like rain over everything it can reach. These ravines continue to widen and expand, swallowing rivers and lakes in their path as the oceans pour into the seemingly endless chasms. The Earth cracks, and the entire planet is absorbed by a blinding light. When it fades, the Earth is turning in on itself. Thousands of segments of its crusts are pulled back, crashing into one another as the molten heart of the planet's core consumes everything that falls toward it. In less than a minute, Earth has been turned into a vibrant, flaming mass. Bram starts tearing up. He begins to sob. I... I can't watch this. I'm sorry. Tinio remains silent as Brams breaks away from their embrace and stands. Their sobbing is loudly audible until Brams turns off his helmet's microphone. Tinio watches Brams make his way into the outpost, trudging along the way. Slowly, he reaches over and picks up the tablet that had been waiting at his side. He taps at it. Good evening, Dr. Dinio. What would you like to do today? Search LS-01 SCP-7699. Searching Lunar Site 01's database. File SCP-7699 found. Retrieving summary. File SCP-7699. Object class. Apollyon. Addendum count. 17. Would you like to access this file? You have been inactive for one minute. Do you wish to view? File SCP-7699. You have been inactive for two minutes, Dr. Denio. Is there anything you wish to do with this file? Delete file. This action is irreversible and will result in the permanent removal of this file. Are you sure you want to continue, Dr. Denio? Yes. Deleting file SCP-7699 from Lunar Site 1's database. File successfully removed. May I assist you further, Dr. Denio? No. Understood. Please go inside, Dr. Dinio. He'd appreciate your company. Dinio continues to hold on to the tablet as he turned his gaze back to the now-destroyed Earth. He smiles somberly. Yeah. It was beautiful. After a few minutes, Dinio looks down at his feet. He stands and begins to walk toward the outpost. In the distance... The Earth's remnants continued to burn. End log.